So I have a lot of information that just exists in my head. And I thought, you know, given the lockdown, that it might be a good point to actually do something with some of it. So I'm going to start a bit of a book club type thing. I have two piles of books, some books that I've already read and some books that I hope to read. And uh, by using the internet, uh, I will create a if, if momentum for myself that I have to read those to continue talking about uh, books once I've finished talking about these ones. So, uh, right before giving you a going into that, today's topic, the coming events uh, will be uh, Plutarch's uh, Rise and Fall of Athens and the Makers of Rome in the Ian Scott Kilvert Penguin Classics translations, which is what the kids are kids all like. Uh, uh, John Ken Kenneth Galbraith's The Affluent Society, which talks about how uh, uh, essentially moving from poverty into affluence. It's kind of, it's, it's uh, the different ways and modes of thinking that one has to put into that um, kind of, uh, basically, it's, 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 it's like, do we, it's like a self-help book, kind of. He's an economist at a very fancy and things. And then obviously, uh, a little bit Don Quixote uh, might do a little bit of um, maybe a like historical deep dive going into kind of the, the history of, of, of um, Spain uh, in the time of uh, Ferdinand and Isabella and this type of thing. Uh, try and kind of, by talking to you, um, uh, teach myself and concretize information that I uh, that I read because otherwise uh, you just read things and they are ephemeral and you can't uh, internalize the information to the point that you can use it in real life and be useful. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Genevieve uh, Tubois' uh, Blackmail or War, which was a Penguin special, which was a line of uh, little newsreel books from the Penguins. This one's from uh, well, from Penguin Publishing. This one's from 1938. Uh, she was a French journalist as well as a member of, I can't remember which cabinet, but one of the, the, the French governments in the 30s, and essentially saw Hitler and Mussolini as the threats that they were. And essentially this book uh, goes into... It's more about uh, Mussolini and the things that he was doing as, in Africa, but how the lack of concern about those things, um, how that eventually led to, um, well, the Second World War. Uh, because if you let Mussolini get away with it in Africa, Hitler can get away with it in Eastern Europe, so on and so forth. Because uh, that, this book... Uh, is from the already read books. And uh, that was a different pile. And rather than, uh, yeah, feign ignorance, can I haven't read this one, this one I have. So I might talk about, I was originally going to talk about Homer's Odyssey, but I might continue talking about this uh, because I think it's very uh, germane to, you know, kind of the, the situation today. Um, it's, it's that idea of being a Cassandra, you know, in, in Greek mythology, obviously she's given the sight, um, you know, kind of the ability to see, uh, into the future. Uh, but, but no one believes her and she's left to kind of go mad essentially. Um, and, and uh, yeah, it's interesting. Genevieve Tubois was essentially that, uh, it, but as a real person, as opposed to Greek mythology, right? And that's really kind of depressing. And so the front cover here says, perhaps war does not pay, but blackmail based on the threat of war certainly did. Encouraged by this discovery, the shameless greed of the totalitarian governments will go on increasing daily. As long as the public opinion in the democratic country does not come to its senses and insist that firm and united countermeasures must be adopted. And so it's kind of this, it's a strange situation to be in, I feel, uh, because obviously once this coronavirus um, situation, you know, 12, 18 months, we, we potentially, you know, years, I don't know, that, that that's not really found, I think, in you know, anything that I've heard or read, but like that hypothetical of like, even if you have the end of 
of of civil of you know many countries and whatever. That's probably dangerous to say. I shouldn't have said that. But essentially, the idea that after this crisis goes on, there's still going to be all of these geopolitical concerns in terms of like great power, the the great power dynamics. And I think that it's um it's interesting to look at. Uh, the historical antecedents so that you can kind of try to get your bearings in terms of um, projecting some sort of idea of what the future is going to look like. And obviously that's a very dicey enterprise. Um, but this is very interesting. There's some great, uh, great pictures in this. A bunch of artwork of kind of leaders. We have Lloyd George here. Quite nice. Uh, we have more people than you would. People, uh, who, who have we got here? There was Binet's. Um, get to someone people would know. Mussolini, here we go. This is a great picture of Mussolini. There we go. Look at that. He, um, yeah, it's kind of, uh, Depressing when you think about it. Um, where, where are we? Come on, there's a really good picture of Chamberlain as well, isn't there? A bunch of, I don't know how many of... There's Stalin. Stalin, there's, there's nothing particularly. Stalin just kind of... Kind of... Um, he's uh, modeling the new uh, uh, Hugo Boss catalog, it seems. Um, uh, but, um, yeah, uh, it's got this really interesting kind of thing from Goring in talking about the, uh, he, he says, uh, there's only one enemy in the world as far as the civilized countries were concerned. And that was Bolshevism against all the countries ought to unite and then scream for a kind of holy alliance of totalitarian countries. It's interesting to kind of, you don't really think of. Italian anti-Semitism playing into like the final solution and the horror of the Holocaust. And it's kind of just it's interesting to see that as being something that people or that like Go, you know, Goering and members of the Third Reich kind of put into their um, interactions with other diplomats. Because it's, I always find it kind of strange to think of interacting with um, Hitler before he's the historical idea of you know, a totalitarian monster, right? Like in the early 30s, but like even though like who he was was quite um, like readily apparent to people in terms of like if you go back and read Mein Kampf, there's still an element in which, um, you know, the America First is in, in the United States and, you know, even other European countries were just kind of like potentially he's just – like he's, it's all bluster essentially, uh, and it's just kind of essentially anger over uh, Versailles, and uh, it's kind of weird to think of that point where it goes from that to all of a sudden you are, you know, in the middle of a war, and you're, you know, the Blitz, and uh, obviously. Uh, she uh, fled. She was ended up imprisoned uh, to Bar. Uh, managed to essentially was a guerrilla and then moved into be a radio broadcaster, kind of like getting the news out to people. And it's I know that there's this picture. I can't find it. I really should have looked at the front of the book. I guarantee you that there was ah there we are. See, that's that's when people make jokes about appeasement. That's what they're talking about. Just that, look at that unibrow. That's how you know you can't trust them. Uh, is there a list of who's where? Chamber oh, Rosa Roosevelt two forty three. Beautiful. There we go. A little bit of FDR. Um, we showed Stalin, Hitler was 124, that's who we missed. 
the um, quite unfortunate, unfortunate fella. Have we got uh, where have we got the? Oh well. Oh, I've realized why, because this is, this was written in 1938. This is how, this is relevant. This is not only written in 1938, but this was published. This book was printed in October of 1938. It survived the war. All sorts of shit. And here it is. Look at it. Everything is, everything is good. Uh, obviously this has, it's missing seven years of context, which is really, really unfortunate context, but, uh, it's a very good, you know, kind of, uh, a warning from whilst the, the collapse was happening. I suppose that's what I'm kind of getting at in terms of what I want to read about and what I want to engage in, in terms of information, is um, the, the the historical epochs, right? And so, if you think about um, World War Two, this is this cataclysmic event, right? And um, in so far as like uh, COVID nineteen, you know, is being uh, seen in a similar light. Um, it's important to kind of go, well, this is going to be potentially 18 months, as I said before, longer, who knows, it's very, everything's up in the air and information, inf information is fluid. But there is also, there is going to become a point, you know, assuming, of course, you know, you don't have, I don't know, as I said, just some black swan, uh, long tail uh, event. Um, you know, I think there will be there, there will be one day when there will be some form of functioning society. And it's interesting to just n not only this, what's going on at the moment, but then also in terms of like how this affects the geopolitical settings in terms of like, well, what are the internals of, uh, you know, political economies? A lot of countries are going to be t are taking on a lot of debt. What are the consequences of all of these decisions five, 10, 20 years down the line? And, you know, how do they feed into a geopolitical context, which is, you know, it defies easy description, uh, let alone um, some sort of solution. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that, that was the first book, Blackmail or War, uh, Genevieve Tubois. I'm talking a little bit about, you know, a little book clubby thing. I haven't gone into writing long essays about things. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm a really perfectionist person, but I'm also somebody who uh, goes off on digressions, long digressions, that potentially just seem completely irrelevant. And then also, uh, what was I talking about? Uh, no, that's a joke. Uh, uh, but then outside of going on long digressions, like um, I can be like a very kind of like perfectionist kind of person, especially in written work. And I feel that like, you know, this was a book that I read maybe, you know, six months ago, right? And so I've forgotten bits and pieces of it, but I remember, you know, kind of like these broad strokes. Uh, and as I said, I thought it was in my unread pile. But um, the basic uh, premise of the show is especially as I um, you know, go into movie, re reading these books I haven't read yet, uh, is to you know, give like informative summaries of uh, not, you know, not maybe all of the ideas, but just like some idea or some function in the book, which can, you can kind of like abstract out for, or which I can, well, I'm going to try and for, for myself and abstract out to be able to kind of like put in mental models in my head. And potentially that process might be utilitous to you, a viewer. Uh, and, you know, 
like and subscribe and all that jazz.